Okay, this is day two of our Barbie investigation, doing linear regression. It's how safe is Barbie? And with this one today, we are going to discuss correlation coefficient. So we started out in the morning and we did a guess the correlation. This applet is something that is available that I can give you guys if you would like it. Uh, but basically what we did is we saw the sample of the data and then they can we can put sort of a guess in here. We checked our guess and we said, okay, the correlation is negative 0 0.410. We're gonna go through a couple of these just to get your um, guess your correlation and see how, how good you are. Um, basically, the negative means it's a negative slope. The positive means it's a positive slope. If the, if the dots are close in pattern, that, that means that um, the correlation is gonna be closer to one. If they're further away in pattern, it's gonna be closer to zero. So for this next new sample here, you can see it's definitely a negative correlation. The pattern is um, pretty tight, but not super, super tight. So it's a moderate correlation. So that's why we have the correlation as negative 6.2. Here's a new one. This one's a positive correlation. It looks like the pattern is going to be a little weaker than the last one because you see some kind of are sticking out a bit and that's gonna be a correlation of 5.583. Um, this correlation here, you can see, definitely has a wider kind of um, pattern. It's, it's in the positive direction, but it's almost, it's very, very weak. And that's why the correlation is just about 0.1 or 0.2. This one's really a strong correlation. It's pretty tight and it's a positive correlation. And the correlation coefficient is 0.884. You are not going to be required to ever know the exact correlation. You just have to kind of know an, an about, a guess. Um, I've said if it's greater than 0.7, we're calling that, pot, um, excuse me, a strong correlation. If it's somewhere between 0.3 and 0.7, we're calling that about moderate. Anything less than 0.3, we're calling weak. And those are just guidelines. All right, this and this, here's the website. It's just if you go to Ross Men Chance and then Appellates and Guess Correlation. This next thing I want you guys to see is that these are actually true correlations. I want you to see that as the per capita of cheese consumption increases, so does the number of people who died by becoming entangled in their bed sheets. Um, as the divorce rate in rain increases, it correlates with the per capita of consumption of margarine. Well, and I could go on and on with these different particular correlations and they're all correct and they're all legitimate correlations. But the problem becomes is when I show you the data and I start trying to tell you that people who drowned after falling out of a fishing boat causes the marriage rate in Kentucky to decrease, right? As one goes down the other. That would be the issue. That is the travesty, is when I'm trying to say that correlation implies causation. And it does not, and that would be the problem in this. And so these are just kind of silly, spurious correlations. And they um, can I can say, hey, as one goes up, the other goes up. There seems to be an association. There seems to be a correlation but I cannot say that one is causing the other. Later on in our class, we definitely get into what causes um, one particular event or what we have to do to show that one thing causes another, but just the fact that there's an association as we see one goes up and one goes down, we cannot say that it's a causation. All right, so for today's lesson, we're going to see how safe is Barbie. So you should go ahead and complete the first page. And these here is going to be, this here is going to be your results. And you see, um, actually, let me bring it up on here. It's a little bit easier to see. And you can see here on how safe is Barbie. Um, you can find the correlation. The way you find the correlation, as I showed you on, on my worksheet, is I gave you the instructions to go to menu 412, which is um, two variable statistics. So go ahead and look at my worksheet. It's not on this worksheet, but when you look at mine, it gives you the instructions of how to do so. So the correlation for this is 0.992. And then you're going ahead and on number four, you're going to add this point that's at the top right-hand side of the screen. And at the top right-hand side of the screen, you add it. And then at that point, um, you're going to go look at the correlation again, and you're going to say, oh, wow, it's actually 0.998. So it actually gets stronger. So what you're supposed to learn from this is that an unusual point or an outlier in the pattern of the data, in the pattern of the line, actually increases the correlation. 
So conversely, when you look at number five, you add a point here, and the point is an outlier also, an unusual point also, but it's not in the pattern of the data, and that's going to weaken the correlation. So on the next part though, for number five, or number six, excuse me, now it's saying, hey, let's put this in centimeters. Well, now it's gonna show you that 0 0.992 and 0 0.992 for number two and for number six, they're identical. And so if you look at the same points from zero to seven in inches versus the same points from zero to seven in centimeters, just because I changed my units does not mean, my correlation does not change. And the reason being is because if I'm, if there's a relationship, like for me, if I'm a, a certain height in inches to my weight in pounds, and now I'm gonna say, oh, I wanna lose weight, so I'm gonna change that to centimeters and kilograms because I'm lighter, I'm less, a smaller number in kilograms. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Just because I've changed the units does not change the relationship between the pattern that my height and weight have, no matter if it's in inches or centimeters or kilograms or pounds. So remember, correlation coefficient does not change even though X and Y units change. Correlation coefficient has no units. Um, the three learning targets I have for you guys to learn today is this one here I went over yesterday, not on my video, but in class. But you're gonna interpret R with your direction, form, and strength. So the direction is always positive or negative. The, the form is always linear. If it's a correlation, it is linear. Otherwise, we use the word association. If something has some sort of a pattern together, we call it an association, and that is fine. Um, the strength is going to go from negative one to zero for, ne for strong negative to weak, and then from zero to positive one for strong positive. That was similar to what I showed you in our little app just a bit ago. Using LY words at the bottom, it says, that's when it's kind of in between there, you would call it moderately strong, moderately weak. That kind of gives you um, an idea and communicates to the reader of your work that it's kind of in between two patterns. And you know sometimes some of the patterns are a little bit unsure, so you can definitely use the LY words to demonstrate it in between. Uh, learning target number two just shows you the properties of R. Just remember, that unusual values and patterns, so for instance, the, um, the unusual features for the outliers, the unusual features and the outliers, it strengthens R as long as it's in the pattern. If it's not in the pattern, then it weakens R, so it makes it closer to zero. Um, R has no units, and changing the units for X and Y does not change R. And the last learning target that we spoke about in um, with our silly or spurious correlations is correlation does not equal causation or correlation does not imply causation. Going back to now your um, check for understanding, if you haven't completed it, go ahead and complete it. Interpreting the correlation of 0.791, that shows there's a moderately strong linear relationship between chocolate consumption and Nobel Prize winners. Uh, cor for number two, correlation does not imply causation, so it doesn't mean that one variable is causing the change in the other. One potential issue or, or solution of why this would be is because maybe it has something to do, something that impacts both variables, like economy in the country. So for instance, a country, a first world country has more money, better economy, people have more money, and then with more money often comes more education and more opportunity to be able to put, be potentially Nobel Prize winners. This is just one potential uh, reason that this could be, that the chocolate consumption and Nobel Prize winners could have some sort of relationship. Um, what effect does Switzerland have on the correlation? It strengthens the correlation since it's an outlier that follows the linear pattern. All right, that's it for day two. And then um, tomorrow is a quiz on day one and day two, doing a group quiz and then an individual quiz afterwards.